I'm looking very tired, but today is a big day. So this is a live example of where the money that's raised for the charity goes. This is a real tangible example of how it can really change the lives, you know, of those who are coming here. You never really know what to expect going into the children's hospital. Tell Ben what, what you've not got here. Uh, I've got half of my head. Yeah. My first meeting, it's a, it's a podcast with Meta and Nicola Mendelssohn and we're doing that at the Gymshark Regional Street Store which is really cool. So I'm getting the train down now and then I need to go back to the shop, get changed, put something smart on because I've got a meeting at Downing Street. So today we're doing a training morning in the Malvern Hills. I'm going to be sat and doing a QA and a and having conversations with the next group of interns that are going to be starting here at Gymshark later this year. Hello everyone, how are you all? Hello, hello, hello. I feel like running's becoming my personality. Every, every, I'm telling everyone that I'm running. I can't believe this is happening to me. There, I've said it. Everyone across the UK is now fuming at their phones and laptops and iPads, but I've said it. Chris Williamson will be very angry and I'll tell you why. Good luck for you, man. How are you? I'm looking very tired, but today is a big day. Okay. Nice little bacon. I buy just normally like two kilos of bacon from the butchers, and then as I want them, I'll slowly pull them out of the freezer so it lasts longer. But I bacon every morning. So, I look and I feel tired today. I don't know why. Yeah, today, we are going to the Birmingham Women's Hospital and then we're going to the Birmingham Children's Hospital. We're going to be doing like a full tour and we're going to be giving out a load of gifts. But it's one of those days where I, you know, I just know it's going to be hard in certain ways because you're going to see some people that are really, you know, up against it. Um, however, they will be in the absolute best care that you can possibly, possibly get. Frodo, Frodo, oi, don't do that. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a hard day, but it's going to be a good day. You always leave the hospital with a slightly changed perspective. And there we have it. I know you're probably thinking this looks like the most boring breakfast on planet Earth. However, it absolutely works for me. Boom. Straight up. Easy. Now we're cooking on gas. A nice little coffee. Chris Williamson will be very angry, and I'll tell you why. Because I haven't waited an hour and a half after waking up for having this coffee. So he will say that this coffee is pointless. That's what he will say. He will say, Ben, you're doing it wrong. You're an idiot. You're wasting coffee beans and milk, and quite frankly, your own time. And I'm sorry, Chris. But I think it's quite nice. Right, so. Today is the day. We're going to Birmingham Women's and Children's Hospital. We are doing a load of recording there. We're doing a tour around the children, uh, the women's first, and then the children's. So I'm just getting set up. Oh my God, look how messy the back of the car is. I've got my running shoes because I'm now starting to run. Actually, this is something I think would be quite cool to film at some point. It's my, my running journey, heavily inspired by Several people. Nick Bear is obviously a constant inspiration. I'll watch some of his running videos. Jack Bywater, who works at Gymshark, who is a great runner. And I hate to say this, but Noel has been running a lot lately. He's been getting very good at it. My brother ran the marathon a few months ago. One, I feel a bit left out. Two, I'm probably feeling a little bit competitive. But yeah, I think it's always good and healthy to get good at running. I got reasonably good maybe close to average at running during covid it'd be nice to pick that up again so yeah i've got my running shoes i've got some gym shot samples first we now drive up to birmingham to the women's so yeah it's going to be a really good day and i'm really looking forward to it and you can see all the stuff in the boot back here that we're going to be giving out at the hospitals today so yeah going to drive into birmingham now it's a bit of a way and there's no doubt traffic so i will see you on the other side An os? I don't know if there's another one. So we start here and it goes all the way to the bottom. So this 
But behind these double doors is all special care. I'll take you to my pride and joy because this room's just recently been refurbished. So all the babies in here are special care babies. So they're ready to go home or nearly. We've got an outreach team. So our babies that are born late preterm as we'll carry on seeing them at home. Yeah. So we don't just say off you go, off you yeah, pop. Yeah. No, we, we've got an out, neonatal outreach nurses who work on the unit who will work on the community seeing them. So we don't hand them over to the health visitors until they are ready to be handed over. So from here, we're intensive care. We usually have four staff. She's my star pupil. Hello. <laughs> she's been here a very, very long time yeah. and she's, she's doubled in size. Yeah. Hasn't she? Hasn't even it's doubled in size now? She has. She has. <laughs> she, she's tripled in size. She's tripled she's in size. Yes. <laughs> yeah. How many weeks? How many weeks in was she born? Twenty-five. She is a frequent flyer, isn't she? She, 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 she? This is her permanent spot, but she occasionally likes to take trips to the children's hospital for a spot of surgery, yeah, doesn't she? <laughs> we get families from all over the country who have had a baby delivered prematurely. Yeah. These families often are one day having a, a perfectly happy life and they're expecting a baby yeah <clears throat> in, not in, it could be in another four or five months and then suddenly this baby gets delivered quite early yeah and then subsequently it needs to go somewhere so we can look after it yeah and they come here so a lot of the parents who are in neonatal um, and we're not successful with a lot of them bring their babies outside to die and why is that it's, it's just yeah, preference it's, it is yeah is it almost like and a natural eight thing out of ten, yeah like you'd rather that than being there. To a... see the sky. Yeah. yeah. And so this is a little memorial garden that we built. And this was put in by a family, uh, Amelia May, who passed away. Mm. And this wasn't here then. There was a bollard here. And the parents were sitting on these bollards with yeah. this baby trying to extubate and stuff. So they put that there. It gets used quite regularly. So this is like a, it's a little garden where the families will gather. Yeah. What Woodland House will do is give them a choice of two gardens and private space yeah, as well. Yeah. So it's important. You say this is five weeks? This is five this weeks is work. Five weeks this is work. Huge. <coughs> <coughs> more than five Massive weeks work. work. But no, honestly, honestly. Always talks about how there's a bit like that traffic, they just want to be outside, yeah. they want to be able to hear the yeah. wind of the trees, and see the rain coming down, just be outside and feel fresh. We should just downstairs, we don't have at all yeah. doing And some parents don't, don't want to be bothered, they don't want us near them. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a bit of a reminder, so it'll be here. There'll be somebody here always, but they'll be free to walk around, make themselves drinks tell the family where to come and, and, and take their time. It's about time, really. So this is a live example of where the money that's raised for the charity goes, and this is um, a building that's called Woodland House. Not finished yet, hopefully it'll be finished by the end of this year. And this is where, in the tragic circumstance that parents do lose a baby here, they'll be able to come here and essentially just take time, I guess, to gather themselves, their thoughts, spend those you know last precious moments with their young one and hopefully you know, this building will help support them as best as they possibly can. And the charity raised three and a half million pounds to build this. And I think this just really shows and illustrates just how important the work is that we're doing here at the charity. And this is a real tangible example of how it can really change the lives of, of um, you know, of those who are coming here. And we don't charge. Mm -hmm. This is all free. Um, and we accommodate families from all over the country. And I'll show you one room, at least it'll give you an idea of what. And the families that are here, their babies will be in... Or their babies in neonatal, yeah, okay, at some, yeah. some different stage. The other thing that does as well is, is it kind of collectively they get together mm. and they compare stories, of course, and, you know... And, and, Support and, one another. And how they are, yeah. This is great. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah. So, as I say, they get, they get ambulanced or they get helicoptered to us and then they don't come with anything at all. They've got no... Yeah pads or anything like that yeah and we offer them this with an ensuite yeah and towels and stuff like that and we've got a little package a little box that we give them with essentials really um, and yeah it works really well so that takes the stress of having to find somewhere yeah to live so we've just driven across Birmingham from the women's hospital and we're now just leaving the charity offices and walking over to the children's hospital and we have a load of gift, well, a load of bags with a uh, basically a water bottle and a nice little gym shark activity book for some of the children who are in the hospital, which is hopefully brighten their day somewhat. And uh, you never really know what you're going to, uh, what to expect going into the children's hospital. So um, it could be quite heavy at moments, but I think it's an important thing to do. 
Liz is the one, the deputy ward sister, and Jane is the um, service manager for uh -huh. renal. Um, so Oft, can a parent be with them all the time? 24 7, oh, a nice. parent. That's nice. um, we don't let two stay overnight, but we don't tell them they have to go at a certain time. They kind of, they probably stay to about 10 when the kids are old, and then the yeah. one will sleep. This we is really nice. It, as, it is nice, like it's so open rather than, yeah. Where do you live? They live in Wales, well, Wales, and they it's have to travel. In Wales? Yeah. yeah. That's a long old That's way. That's how far I can. Three times a week. Three times a week. Oh, do you? And sits here for four hours, and then drives all the way home. Oh, really? Wow. Oh, wow. Luna, and what's your name? Isla. Isla. Hello, Isla. Hello, Isla. Okay. Got a little gift for you. Thank you. Got a little gift for you, right? And tell Ben what you've not got here. Uh, I haven't got half of my head. Really? No bones. No really? Cooperation. Yeah. But how are you feeling? Good. Cool. You know my fifth one too, haven't you? And then will that be it? Or will there be more after that? That'll be it. That goes away. And then, so what is it the operations are doing? Are you just taking away part of the... Is it of your brain? It was no, it was... So he developed sinusitis, which tracked to the brain. Mm. So but his bone got infected, so we had to remove this part of the brain. Yeah. When they put the bone back, it got infected again. So now they have to remove it, so they're going to have to put almost fake bone titanium. Okay. Which is what we're doing. Amazing. Good luck. So lovely to meet you. Good luck. What's your name again? It's Ben. My name is Peter. Lovely to meet you, Peter. I've got a little bag. Yeah. Oh, it's got to be a little Christmas. Christmas. Oh, yeah. What's in there? Yeah. What's in there? 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 Yeah, and then you'll start his chemo after. This is the worst bottle ever. Yeah, it's like a weight. Yeah, that's it. Come back and come back. Oh, okay. We'll come back again. Give him the thumbs up, Jack. That way, that way. <laughs> see you soon, Jack. Bye. 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 See you, Jack. See you later. So I am home and I'm sat in the car just reflecting on today and it was honestly today was a really really hard day and I sound like I feel I'm sorry I feel pathetic saying that because I'm not going through any hardships compared to so many people that I met today. The main takeaways for me was well just how important the work that we do and that the charity does is it's so important it's so important that we raise for the things you know that we're focused on raising for at the moment specifically at the moment there's a huge focus on raising money for the new MR MRI machine and just the admiration for the the children the patients the parents going through such difficult times and remaining so so positive and upbeat so yeah it, it was a it was a huge day today today for me was in many ways a life-changing day and it does make me proud to be a part of the Birmingham Women's and Children's Hospital charity really genuinely from the bottom of my heart so proud to be a part of this team and to be able to do my small bit to help support the great causes that they're raising for but yeah genuinely the the children and the parents the level of positivity and strength that they showed to me today was so 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 inspiring they're just incredible morning Today is Monday, Ugh. and I'm in London today. My first meeting, well, it's a, it's a podcast with Meta uh, and Nicola Mendelssohn, and we're doing that at the Gymshark Region Street store, which is really cool, and that obviously makes life far easier for me, so that's fun. So I'm getting the train down now. I'm going to land in a little bit early. I'll probably have about an hour, 45 minutes before the podcast starts. After that, we'll probably go and grab lunch, and I'll catch up on some emails and so on, and then I need to go back to the shop, get changed, 
put something smart on because I've got a meeting at Downing Street, which is really fun. It's really exciting. Um, and it's about sort of uh, how we can promote entrepreneurship, particularly in the younger age groups in the United Kingdom. I know like people, if people like myself go to Downing Street, I know that people get very political, whether or not you agree with or disagree with what the Conservative Party are doing. My point of view is simple. Regardless of whoever is in power, I want to do my utmost to help the people of the country. And if that means me going in and advising the Conservative government, I'm more than happy to do it. And equally, if that meant at some point in the future, I was to in some way support and advise the Labour government, then equally, I am happy to do that too, because my loyalty is to the people of our country. But yes, today will be a really, really Really good day and I'm really excited. So I'm looking forward to going down today. A chat with Meta and Nicola will be really cool. I, I don't think we've actually met in person and we've connected a lot over the years for different reasons, but we've not actually met in person. So the podcast will be really cool. And obviously being back in the Regent Street store, having a look around. And yeah, so this will be a good week. It's a busy week. Anyway, I'm in the car. I've got to get to the train station. So let's head over now. So I've landed at the train station. The train doesn't leave for another 10 minutes. Oh God, I've got so much stuff. Right, let's go and get the train. So we've made it into London and we're just walking down Regent Street to the Jim Charles store, which is where our first stop is, where we're going to be doing the podcast with Nicola Mendelssohn from Meta, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Last week was the first week of my new running program. I'm using an app called Runner and basically I'm running three times a week and my ambition, my dream is to do a sub 20 minute 5k. Now, for those of you watching, I'm nowhere near that at the moment. All I've really done is lifted weights for a long, long time. I haven't done any cardio really. A little bit during COVID and then since being a kid playing football and stuff. Now I'm doing three runs a week, I'm following the program and I'm hoping to get to that goal uh, in the next few months, but, but we'll see. Um, but I ran Saturday and Sunday, so I'm feeling a little bit tired today, a little bit more tired than I ordinarily would, but I'm also feeling good and I'm enjoying the run, the runs. And I think it's also made a lot easier given the fact that the weather has been so glorious in the UK for the last few weeks. So yeah, if you want to follow my running journey, then please do. Any words of advice are always uh, helpful. I am an absolute newbie when it comes to running, but I'm looking forward to hopefully getting quite good at it. Are you all right? You're right. How are you all right? Yeah, good. How are you? Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, you right? Good to see you, babe. Good. inspires you now about the Gymshark community? It's funny you ask that because I literally stumbled across this the other week. So I was working here in London two or three weeks ago and it was on a Tuesday and I finished. And if I'm if I'm in London, I'll always pop in and just come and have a look at the store. And I finished all my meetings and I, I was walking down the street and I thought, you know, it's going to be very quiet. I'll pop my head in the door. I'll have a look around. I'll maybe grab a hoodie or something and I'll be on my way. No one will even notice that I was here. And I walked down Regent Street here and like, as I got closer, I heard like a noise. And I was thinking, what the hell's going on here? And I come down here and there must have been about at least 200 people screaming outside the store. And I completely forgot it was the day that we do run club. And then obviously a bunch of them turn around and clock me and they're looking at me. And I think a load of them are recognizing me. And they're like, oh, Ben, great to see you. You're doing the run. I was like, no, I'm not doing the run. But it was so amazing to see how into it and how excited everyone was. And then the bit that really got me was when they go out in three different groups, almost like one pace, another pace, another pace. And they were like talking about running up to, I think it was running up towards Buckingham Palace. And I was like, oh, that sounds so cool. I really want to do that. And I'm not a massive runner. And there's other people in the office that are great lifters and runners. And it just sort of really inspired me to, to go off and do that. And that's not something I've got in my arsenal sort of thing. I'm, I feel very comfortable lifting weights and being in a gym. But if you asked me to run a 10K, then I'd be fairly nervous and wouldn't be able to do a good job. So it was seeing all those other people do it 
that really made me think, do you know what, I would, I would love to do that. And now, funnily enough, I'm doing my best. I'm on like a running program and I'm trying to get better at running as well as I go. That's okay, yeah? Smart. <laughs> Downing Street we go. Yeah. So, we're just in the Uber now, over to Downing Street. It should be good fun, I'm looking forward to it. So, to be honest, I think it's a fairly open discussion. We haven't got like a really set agenda. The only sort of point was uh, entrepreneurship in young people in the UK, which is cool. There's this sense, having worked in the US a lot, there's this real feeling of optimism around entrepreneurship, which I really like. And I think in the UK, we don't quite have that same level of optimism. So I think it would be nice to have something more similar to that. It's interesting to me, the government are asking these questions because personally, I, I mean, I don't know any entrepreneur that wants government involved in their small business in any way, shape or form. So that's it's quite a funny juxtaposition in many ways that government are talking about this. So I think, again, like government should just reach the wheels and allow small businesses to do what they need to do. They shouldn't be bogged down in, you know, bureaucracy and things like that. So I think, I genuinely think the government just needs to get out of the way and allow people to, to run their businesses in the way that they see fit. Almost like encourage them more. Really. Yeah, like, I think as long as there's that level of encouragement, the, the right things are being taught at schools at the right ages, then I think the government can just leave, then leave the public to do whatever they want. Yeah. I mean, it's like from 10, so where should, shall I leave you? Yeah. Here? You... No, off he goes. No, he doesn't know where he's going. Oh well. Good morning. Today is a good day because even though it's a working day, we've blocked off this morning to do our first practice training walk for the Three Peaks. So in September, we're doing the Three Peaks Challenge, which is where you have to go up or summit the three highest peaks in the UK. Um, and we're doing it to raise funds for the Birmingham Women's and Children's Hospital Charity. So today we're doing a training morning in the Malvern Hills, and then we're gonna perch in a hotel over the road this afternoon and do some work, admin, emails, catch-ups, prep for tomorrow in the office, and everything that comes with it. So yes, today's a good day. I'm interested to see how hard it is. I haven't done a proper hike like this in a long, long time. Luckily for us, the weather is amazing. Now I am testing out these, I've got these Vivo walking boots which are like barefoot style walking boots, which look good. Let's see how we get on. Oh. Why does that... Yes. That looks too easy. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad to be fair. Bring out the car 10 minutes, I can see the top. Do you think it's harder to walk uphill or downhill? Because I always found downhill was rank on my knees. Yeah. Uh, I prefer I prefer going up. Yeah, I feel like that's what I'd rather. I wonder why they've left their tails on. Well, they normally cut them off, don't they? How many have you ever seen a sheep with a tail? I don't think I've ever seen a sheep with a full tail. Loving it, loving, loving it. it. Out in nature, it's a pleasurable stroll. Not too steep, weather's perfect, not too hot, not too cold. And the view's 10 out of 10. I love the Malvern, it's really nice. Good training for three feet. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like it'll be significantly harder than this. How long does it take to get up the first one, do you reckon? Uh, two and a half hours up, I would say. Okay, so it would be this entire walk with the whole thing uphill, because this is fairly flat, isn't it? This yeah. Isn't really a, but the thing, yeah, whenever we do Ben Nevis or Scarfell or Snowden, it'll be literally straight up. Yeah. No real flat bit. For literally a couple of hours. Yeah. How long did that take? Two and a bit hours? That was two hours 28 Two hours 28 minutes. It's good. Nice. Good weather. Not too hot, not too cold. It was a good, I would say a good first 
walk in preparation for Three Peaks, but I feel like Three Peaks will be significantly more difficult than that. But yeah, good to get it in the books. And now we're gonna head over the road to the Malvern Hills Hotel and have some lunch and do a bit of work. So today is a lovely day. The weather is incredible and it has been for the last week here in the UK. Uh, and we're doing an office day, so it's a fairly normal day at Gymshark. However, we've just left the IQ where we've been working all morning and we're going over to the headquarters because we are going to be meeting or I'm going to be sat and doing a Q&A and having conversations with the next group of interns that are going to be starting here at Gymshark later this year, which is really, really exciting because interns genuinely add so much to the business and so many fresh ideas. And I think they really enjoy it as well. So yeah, we're going to sit down and do a Q&A talk to them about all things Gymshark, get them ready for them joining the business and yeah, meet them for the first time. So really looking forward to this. I'm just, honestly, I've, well, first and foremost, it's just an intro, isn't it? But yeah. one of the things I really like about having interns is a lot of them tend to be customers beforehand and they tend to be really interested in the brand. Obviously, very enthusiastic, full of new ideas, which is great for the business. I mean, the feedback that we get is that they tend to get more I guess the average intern at Gymshark tends to get more responsibility and more opportunity than at the average place. So I think that's really exciting for them as well. So just to warm them up for that as well, i.e. I don't mean to sound condescending, but they're not just you know, doing really, really basic things. They will get really great opportunities to push themselves and learn and things like that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to just chatting to them and I guess hearing about what they're excited about as well. Jack, Jack's here as well, we're going to yeah, film, that's all right. We're doing a Q and A. Hello, everyone. How are you all? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Jim Shark. How are you? Um, I've worked here since I was 18-ish. I think yeah, 18. So it's now 11, 12 years because obviously worked here before we were like a, an incorporated official business as well. So I've seen everything. I've seen obviously the startup, the very, very early days, the good times, the bad times, the a bit of everything, which has been great fun as well. So I currently now work with the leadership team who I'm assuming you'll get intro to at some point. Um, but the area of the business that I probably spend most of my time now would be product and more specifically design. And yeah, it's I think it's a really exciting place to be. So thank you for picking Gymshark as well. I, I really appreciate it. And I will answer any of your questions as openly and an on, as honestly as I possibly can. Um, as an intern, I was just wondering why is it so important to well one you guys will bring fresh ideas which is cool and startups and businesses like ours I, I, I said at the start we want to see transformational growth we don't want one or two percent annually like many of the businesses we want transformational growth and with that you need transformational ideas and and mindset and people and and I think you guys will bring or I'd like to think you'll bring those ideas in an abundance and that's I guess one of the things I would ask of all of you in your respective areas is don't shy away from putting those ideas forward don't think that just because someone has more experience than you that they're always right sort of thing like push ideas forward put them out into the room into the ether and we talk a lot about the best ideas winning here so I think that the new ideas that you guys will bring will genuinely help the business and, and really do. So I think it's this really symbiotic relationship where I'd like to think that interns and you guys will get so much from it hopefully and hopefully you'll go back, you know, in 12 months time you'll have grown as people and you'll have experiences that you wouldn't have been able to get purely through school and education. But equally, the value that you guys will bring to the business is, is great as well. Like this certainly isn't a one-way thing. This isn't Gymshark giving you uh, an, an, an internship in, in of itself. You offer so much to us as well. Working day continues and we've got a little, nice little slot. So we thought we would come and get a little back session in. We've got, like, because of just work being so busy and life being so busy, having to like grab whatever time to get into the gym, I possibly can because it's sort of, sometimes feels like it's the only thing that keeps me sane. So yeah, looking forward to getting into the lifting club and uh, hitting a bit of back. See, we should do legs today, but I'm going to skip the legs because we're because we're running. Which I feel like I, everything. I feel like running's becoming my personality. Every every I'm telling everyone that I'm running. I can't believe this is happening to me. But it's funny because before I was thinking, 
I don't know when it was. I remember doing a run and being really cold and thinking, oh, I can't wait for the summer. Now, I feel like it's actually far better in the winter. Granted, it is a bit dark and wet and cold, but within like, what, two minutes, you're warm, aren't you? Even if it's like two or three degrees. I feel like I'm sounding very English now, aren't I? Yeah. I wish it wasn't this hot. Really? There, I've said it. Everyone across the UK is now fuming at their phones and laptops and iPads, but I've said it, I wish it wasn't this hot. Right, so just finished lifting in the gym. It was a very quick session in about in and out in about 30, 35 minutes. Um, now we're gonna run back over to GSIQ, do a bit of work, emails, I've got one more call to do, and then we are gonna go for a run, and I'm very nervous because it is so, so hot. Honestly, I can't remember it being this hot in the UK in a long, long time. It must be, it must be late 20s, pushing 30 degrees at least, but it's humid and close, and yeah, I'm very nervous about running. But we'll, we'll give it a go and see how we get on. Okay. So, second workout of the day with Jack. We trained back earlier. Normally I would do back and legs, but because we're running, didn't do the leg section. Um, and then we're doing, I'm on this runner app, so we're doing, and I'm doing a program over eight weeks, so we're doing something called unders and overs, which I've never done before. Uh, so it's a 1K warmer at a steady pace. 1K at five, a 5.20 pace, 1K at a five minute pace, 1K back at a 5.20 pace, 1k at a five minute pace and then a 1k sort of to just finish off at any old pace so it's six k in total but 4k of which is actually working so and it's very hot so i am to be honest the running actually isn't too difficult it's it's a decent pace sort of for me where i'm at now it's the heat and the sun that i'm more worried about but i'm going to start yeah. running and spend as little time in the sun as possible so wish me luck